What is Hatch and Toki Peeps? Home Top coming at you today with our team builder for week four of the PPL D2 season three. And we are playing Eric, aka Ashton Akai, and the Bristol Badoof. Now, let's go over his team real quick, and I need to go through this a little bit fast because I'm playing him at 5 o'clock in the morning my time, and it's like 4.45 right now, so yeah. His team, Mega Scizor, Hydreigon, Hydreigon, however you want to say it, Raikou, Arcanine, Florges, Slowking, Halucha, Sandslash, Tauros, and Grottle. Now, let's get into what we brought for that. Things that I'm really worried about on his team, Hydreigon, because it has perfect coverage for everything on any team I bring, and that thing is just really scary. Uh, Raikou is pretty fast. Uh, Arcanine always can be a problem. Hopefully we get that handled. Uh, every time I play a floor just in league f in league format, it wipes the floor with me. Uh, namely, when Yo Fizz had it, and that scarf water, HP water, scared me. Um, and last season in the PPL D2, where I just got destroyed by that floor just from I think Ruby Marrow. So, not looking forward to that. Other than, I mean, Tauros can be scary. It's faster than most of my team. Halucha, I think, outspeeds all of my team. Oh, disclaimer. Uh, in between last week and this week, we acquired Heliolisk for Galvantula and Articuno. Um, we dropped Galvantula and traded Articuno to uh, Yofiz, actually, who wanted... Articuno pretty bad, but I told him we had to wait till after we played so he couldn't use it against me. Wink, wink. And Articuno played one match for us and got our only kill of the first week, so it was time to let Articuno go because we had a huge rock weakness. Okay, back to the match. We are bringing Choice Specs Garchomp. Now let me tell you about Garchomp. He is a certified G and a bona fide stud, and you can't teach that. So that's why we're bringing him this week. Now, Garchomp can uh, just do so many things. And you want to know what else about Garchomp? He's seven foot tall, and you can't teach that either. So, we're hoping that the team Ashton Akai brings is SAWFT Soft. Because we're just going to destroy it with this Choice Specs Garchomp. Now, why am I bringing Choice Specs Garchomp? I look at his team, and I think this really doesn't touch Florges if it's specially defensive. But... This is more designed to uh, combat a defensive will o wisping uh, Arcanine. I would you think, well, why would you expect him to bring that? Because I have Entei, and Entei runs through his team if he doesn't have defensive. Well, I mean, it doesn't need to be will o wisp but if he doesn't have a defensive Arcanine, uh, Choice Band Entei just beats him. I mean, Slowking can stand in its way. It can get take two shots, Sand Slash maybe, but the rest of my team destroys Sand Slash. So yeah, a Choice Specs Earth Power has a very good chance to one shot Arcanine. So that's bueno. Uh, Draco Meteor because it hits everything else on his team except for uh, Mega Scizor and Florges. Uh, Dragon Pulse and Fire Blast uh, because we're going to be locked into something. Fire Blast hits the rest of his team. We have just enough speed to outspeed Max Speed Arcanine because the the gap in his speed... No, Hydreigon. Max Speed Hydreigon, I'm sorry. It is faster than Arcanine. Um, the speed gap in his team is from, yeah, like 115 down to 98. And a lot of my team falls in that, so uh, a lot of the speed tiers on my team I have designed and have spreads to outspeed max speed Hydreigon, which probably will be Scarfed, because every time I face Hydreigon and it destroys me in League format, it's Scarfed. So, <sighs> gotta worry about that. But that is why we are bringing the Certified Gene Bonafide Stud this week. Uh, then we're going to Landmine. Now, I know what you're thinking, he has Arcanine, he has Hydreigon, he has... A, a lot of the things on his team have real good fire coverage, like Slowking. Uh, HP Fire from Florges, if it's got any at all special attack, is really uh, scary. 
but at the same time, I need something to come in and just wall Mega Scizor, because I'm pretty sure he's gonna bring it. I need something that can switch in to um, HP Ices and or Volt Switches from Raikou, and this does that fairly comfortably. Uh, so yeah. A few of the other things that uh, physically, I mean, this wall stand slash for days, uh, the stands in Tauros's way, barring a Fire Blast set, which if he's bringing it, we'll probably have it for the coverage. So yeah, and it's somewhat possible he may not bring fire coverage on Hydreigion. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. But I mean, if he is choice locked Hydreigion and I uh, get him to drop a Draco, this switches in and just walls it for days. So that's why we have, uh, we need Stealth Rock because his team's going to be reliant on switching a lot. I mean, he has Mega Scizor, he has Hydreigion, and he has Raikou. If I'm not mistaken, those were his first three draft picks. Those all have a switching move in most of their primary sets between Volt Switch and U-Turn. So we're looking for that. Uh, Leech Seed, because the only grass type on his team is Grottle, and I don't know that he's going to bring it. Uh, Gyro Ball and Power Whip for coverage. No, I know what you're thinking. This doesn't hit Arcanine at all. Well, I'm not going to be staying in on Arcanine. I'm not dumb. So, yeah. Uh, hopefully we can hit the Leech Seed or get Stealth Rocks up on the switches when Arcanine comes in and play accordingly from there. Uh, max special or max physically defensive this week because Mega Scizor. And we don't want him Swords Dancing in our face. Next, we're bringing Roger again. Jolly Roger the Radicate because this thing puts in work against his team. It doesn't outspeed max speed Hydreigion, but it outspeeds uh, Arcanine and below on the speed tiers. And that is fantastic. That means I'll outspeed every single one of his walls, including Mega Scissor, who doesn't uh, want to come into a flame wheel. And without the Swords Dance, has a possibility not to kill me with Bullet Punch. So, bueno. Uh, the things I don't outspeed get hit by Sucker Punch really hard. Um, but yeah, that's the set. We got the Flame Wheel. Sucker Punch Facade. We're bringing Protect this week because Sword Stance was just a mistake last week. Um, no real need for U-Turn because anything he's going to bring into this is not going to want... Uh, he's not going to bring in anything to this that I want to U-Turn out on. Next, we're bringing Steven Universe, Mega Sableye. Uh, fairly similar set to last week, but we are not running will o -Wisp, we're running the Dazzling Gleam because uh, Hydreigion's a thing, we need to be able to hit it. Um, this is more or less a last ditch effort if my other attempts to wall things like, you know, Arcanine or Hydreigion go down. Um, this is more or less to come in, take a hit, and start setting up. Uh, this gets annihilated by Calm Mind Florges, because I don't really have a strong way to hit it, and it's going to beat me in the Calm Minding Wars. Uh, even after a Calm Mind, I think with minimal investment, after I get a Calm Mind, it's still possible for Florges to nearly two-shot me. Uh, that's with minimal special attack investment with Moonblast. So we're going to have to watch out for that. This is namely... Uh, like I said, uh, for Tauros, Halucha, I can come in while sloking for days. And stuff of that nature. Um, he doesn't really have, outside of Sand Slash, a strong rocker for Stealth Rocks, which is really good for us because we're not bringing a hazard removal aside from this. So if we see Sand Slash, we'll lead with this uh, to avoid getting his rock set up. And things of that nature. Plus, if we can get Mega up early, we don't need the Prankster ability on this. So, getting Mega up early would be good, depending on what we think his lead will be. We don't want to lead this off against Raikou because Raikou just comes in and does like 30 to 50 damage, depending on whether it's Scarf uh, or Specs or a different set. So, yeah, that's what we're doing here. Uh, Shadow Ball and Dazzling Gleam because near perfect coverage against his team. And fun things. Now we're bringing Heliolisk, the beast from the east. Coming this week, 
Uh, like I said, enough speed to outspeed max speed hydrogen by one point. And we're bringing the dry skin this week because otherwise sloking is a huge problem with Scald. Uh, I mean, granted we can bring in Street Shark or Landmine, but we don't want Landmine to get burned. And other things just get whittled down really quick. And having something with a water absorbing ability is just fantastico. Plus, if he does manage to get a Brox, this is going to be a really nice switch in to get a little bit of health back. Uh, assault Vest, because with no investment, Assault Vest comes in and takes two Draco Meteors with no prior damage, uh, assuming the drop and Scarf and not Specs. Clarification. Can take two Dracos. Um, takes most other special hits from his team, too, really, really well. Which is good, and this thing can just stand in the face in Raikou and Hyper Voice all day long. And we will win that war. All the time. All. The time. So this way now. Um, Hyper Voice really does a number on his team outside of Mega Scizor. Which is surprising that it, he doesn't have a Ghost type and his only resist is Mega Scizor. Now granted, we don't have much for Mega Scizor if it's rocking the uh, superpower, which is going to be scary against his team. Um, because I have three things that are weak to fighting. Um, he does have Halucha, which outspeeds my entire team. But I'm not, I mean, he hasn't brought it yet. And I don't think he's going to bring it against his team. Because Iron Barb's Landmine and possible physically defensive uh, Ruskin Rocky Helmet Garchomp, which would beat it. So I, I don't think he's going to bring it, especially since we have Steven Universe, who can uh, do the Bernie things. So that's good. Uh, like I said, just enough speed to outspeed max speed hydrogen and everything else in uh, special attack and hit points for longevity uh volt switch uh for initiative because i come and take a hit switch out when he appropriately switches uh his only immunity to this is sand slash which i'm not sure he's going to bring this week uh only other resists are raikou who isn't going to want to take too many hydrogen who isn't going to want to again take too many and Grottle, who I don't know that he would bring this week. So, I think this set's really going to put in work against his team. Uh, Surf in there just for coverage for Arcanine. In the event he's running some uh, funky set. Last, we're bringing in Tyrion. Who, once the Arcanine goes down, really has its way with his team. Uh, defensive Slowking can also pose a problem. But... Defensive Slow King doesn't want to come into Stone Edges, and after coming into a few Sacred Fires, even if he's healing himself off, isn't in the best of shape. Uh, especially after we get a burn, I think we beat it with the Sacred Fires after it's come in and already taken one. So that's good. But, I mean, after Arcanine goes down, assuming he's running the Flash Fire, which I think he kind of has to this week... Uh, Entei pretty much has his way with his team, and if he doesn't get rocks up, I'm switching in for free. And after prior damage, and hopefully hazard, and chip damage, uh, Sacred Fire is just going to run the gauntlet on his team. And after I get his team down to half, Bandit Extreme Speed takes down the majority of his team. That isn't, I mean, just pure physical wall like Sand Slash, and uh, obviously Mega Scizor who resists it. But I mean, Mega Scissor is the only resist on his team to the extreme speed, which is fantastic because he doesn't have anything that out prioritizes it. Out prioritize. Yeah, that's a word. Out prioritizes it. Uh, because extreme speed is now plus two. That's excellent. And I think we have enough on the defensive side between Steven Universe, Sunstorm, and Landmine to be able to come in and take hits. Um, between Landmine and Tyrion, uh, we really switch in at random, depending on what we think he's going to be going for between Moonblast, HP Fire, whatever else he might have it on that floor just. Because I'm, I think he's going to bring it because he has to because of, uh, Steven Universe. Nothing else on his team really fights it that well. So really really thinking we got a good team matchup this week hopefully we play well a lot better than last week so let me know what you think guys uh did i prep well 
I uh, want to thank everybody who's always telling me on my videos what I could do to prep better, that I read those and I always understand things. This won't go up to after the battle anyways, but thank you for keeping those thoughts in my head. So alright guys, this has been on Mentup, and we will catch you on the flip side. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.